Will Selenrod and welcome to episode five of Collector Chassis' Story Behind the Collector. Today we are going to interview Paul Pasella and Paul has just an amazing collection here. Paul, why don't you come on in and yeah. say hey, hi to everybody. Really great, good, great. Paul. Well, I'm uh, glad to be. Glad you guys got here. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, we're very excited to look at all these cars here. You've got a great garage. A uh, lot of history too, yeah. and great stories behind each one of these cars. So, yeah, be happy to take you around. Okay, can you tell us a little bit about how you got into car collecting? Yeah, well, I started. Uh, I guess I was <laughs> one of those guys in high school at the, you know, when you had the study hall, and I had my book in front of me, but I had a, a, ma a car magazine inside in the middle, of the book, that kind of so thing. the teacher couldn't was, see it. Yeah, so the teacher didn't see me. So, you know, uh, but uh, I've always been into cars. My first car was a. Uh, a 64 Mustang 2 plus 2 that I got, and then I had a Boss 302 in 1970, and I've always been into cars and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I got into, about 25 years ago, I started doing uh, some racing and stuff, okay. and been kind of playing with that for a while now, too. Well, and as everybody sees, you have a lot of red cars here, which means Ferrari, so you then gravitated to Ferrari, so you started with muscle cars and slowly gravitated to the Ferrari, to the European Correct, cars. Yes, yes. Was there a particular reason for that? Well, you know, my uh, heritage was Italian, uh, okay. so that helped a little bit. And I like the idea that they were hand-built mm -hmm. and the story behind Enzo Ferrari. And it was a different car. You didn't, you know, and my first one, which I bought 30 years ago, you know, was fairly reasonable at the time. It wasn't yeah. crazy money. And I just loved the workmanship of it and the look of it, and uh, so it kind of grew. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. We look forward to looking at each one of these cars. Let's go ahead and get started. BB. It's carbureted car. It's called a boxer because the 12 cylinders oppose each other and they, they kind of go like this. So it looks like a boxer on it. Um, there were 929 made uh, of this version, which was a carbureted version, which is the one you kind of want on it. And in the early 80s, late 70s, this was truly the supercar of its time and I, I I've had this car 25 years now and um, it's it's a terrific car I'll, I'll pop mm -hmm. okay this, this yeah it's beautiful I mean it's the classic red color and how many cylinders do we have here Paul this is 12 cylinders oh my gosh. 380 horsepower that is impressive and uh, yeah it's a huge engine it's, yeah it's just I mean it's it's phenomenal and um, it's a it's a fun car to drive. It's it's certainly much more of a car you want out on the highway versus going around town. How is it to or, drive this car? I mean, there's no power steering, right? You no, know, it's it's uh, maybe maybe one of the tougher cars in this collection to drive. It takes mm -hmm. about 20 minutes until the transmission oil gets warm and you can really shift it. But after that, it's a fun car. And you know, taking it out on a run on the highways and stuff, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot different, and it's. Kind of a, looks like uh, when people think of a Ferrari, what a Ferrari looks like mm -hmm. on it. You know, it's red. It's got the color and then the whole uh, the whole style of it. Yeah, the big engine. I love yeah. Yeah. looking at all those carburetors. I mean, keeping those all in tune is that a challenge? Well, luckily I have uh, a couple guys that uh, really help me out an awful lot, and mm -hmm. um, you know they're able to keep it up. And you know. Um, one of the things I found about these carburetors, particularly once they're set, they're usually pretty good. You okay. know, once you set a Weber carburetor, you know, it's uh, it's usually stays that way. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but well, it's been a great car. It great would be car. great to start it up at some point and uh, listen to what 12 cylinder sounds like. Sure. So 
this is car number two. Can you tell us about this car, your make and model? Sure. Uh, again, it's a Ferrari, and it's a uh, 355 Challenge car, 1996. The Challenge was set up by Ferrari uh, to get uh, folks out of the street and onto the racetrack with their cars. So the Challenge cars were set up a little differently. They had uh, the seats, the suspension, the roll bar, um, uh, slight adjustment to uh, the engine. This is 380 horsepower, 3.5. So you actually bought this car from Ferrari with the roll bar and the racing seats, or did you do that yourself? No, it was already done when I bought it. I didn't buy it new. I okay. bought it, yeah. Actually, the 512 PBLM I was telling you about, mm -hmm. that uh, I, I raced, here's a picture of it right here, actually, on it. Uh, we were uh, doing a major overhaul on that, so I bought uh, this so I could keep racing. I, I didn't want to wait. I didn't want to lose a couple of years. Yeah. So, so how long have you this. been racing? Um, probably 25 years now. Yeah, okay. Or whatever. On it. And so, are you racing primarily on the East Coast or all over? Uh, East Coast. Yeah, okay. East Coast. And I'm I'm way you know I, I was much more aggressive and doing much more earlier on, mm -hmm. and now I do. You know, more or less club events and a few other things. We're going to Sebring uh, next week, actually, uh, with uh, with this, another car that we're going to see in a minute or two. Okay. So this was a great car. It's a fun car to drive, very forgiving, um, and um, and a lot of fun. It's a yeah. lot of fun. And so, what size engine would this car have? Uh, this is a 3.5 liter. It's a 355 engine okay. from the 355 series of Ferrari. And how many cylinders would that? Be? This is eight cylinders. Okay, and it's naturally aspirated? Correct. This is car number three in Paul's wonderful collection. Paul, can you tell us a little bit about this car, your make and model, and what sure. makes it special? It's a 2008 uh, 599 GTB. Um, I actually got this car because it has the paddle shifters, and I wanted oh. to see what the paddle shifters, how, how I would like it. Yeah, because that. the other two cars we just yeah. looked at were yeah, manual. Everything's a manual, yeah. you, know, you know? So I, I just right. wanted to see how I would like it, and I got jealous. I see these guys on a racetrack and I'm I'm shifting and clutching and they're just popping the, <laughs> on the steering so, uh, wheel. Yeah, so I wanted to plus it's like it's a wonderful car. I mean it's got the air conditioning, it's got Bluetooth, it's got all the amenities. Uh, six hundred the, the other thing I like is it's a front engine car, it's six hundred and twelve horsepower, six point oh liter. Uh, zero to 62 in 3.2 seconds. Wow. And it's got a top speed, rated top speed, of 208 miles an hour. So I, it was kind of an unusual car for its time. I remember, it, it was mm -hmm. 2008. And I feel, it's a, I think it has just absolutely gorgeous lines. Yes. You know, the pillar in the back and how mm -hmm. the, uh, uh, the aerodynamics of it and it's just a spectacular car. So I, uh, now you've owned this car for a while, right? Yeah, I've owned this car. This one I've owned for five years now. Okay. Yeah, all right. So it sounds like you're warming to the paddle shifter. It sounds like a car you're going to keep for a while. <laughs> yeah, I don't like to get rid of any of my cars. Because <laughs> I, then I always regret them or whatever. So uh, I, luckily I don't need, and, and I have some space here. So uh, mm -hmm. no, I'm not going to, I have no intention of getting rid of it. It's a great car. It's a fun car to drive out east on the island and, Mm -hmm. You know, um, again, very comfortable and just an awesome car. Paul, this is a very interesting car. It's not uh, red, for mm -hmm. one, and it's not a Ferrari for number two. So tell us about this one. Sure. It's a 32 Deuce Coupe, uh, which is the quintessential. It's a five window. It's a quintessential hot rod. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the one that, you know, going back, looking back, that hot rod is most wanted. 
and it was always on my agenda. I had a 31 uh, Model A uh, pickup. Uh, there was a street rod that I had for a while, and um, this one came from California. The individual is a real estate developer out there. He spent $326,000 building this car to win the Oakland Road uh, Roadster Show, which he did, wow. by the way, mm -hmm. with this particular car. It's a 383 Chevrolet engine in it, 450 horsepower. Everything else has been um, meticulously gone over, all professionally done. What I liked about it was an all steel body, number one. That's but extremely he, rare, right? Because everybody's coming every out of the fiberglass. Well, they, and, then, and then what they do, they chop it and they do a lot of radical stuff to it. And I like this because um, it wasn't molested in that way, in my view. Yeah. It has the original body. And then, and then all the rest obviously is uh, is brand new. I like the way the flames were very subtle on mm -hmm. it. You know, it doesn't it doesn't pop out. Um, it's got a five speed uh, manual transmission, trimet transmission on it, and um, a Jaguar rear end. It's absolutely chromed out, and it's um, it's just a, a a terrific car. And uh, you know, it really it really turns some heads. It's when beautiful. They see this. I mean, it's, it's and now beautiful. is this a leather interior too? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And everything that steering wheel good. is designed so it looks like it matches mm -hmm. the plane. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's kind of like a, a a reddish mahogany in there mm -hmm. on it, and it's got a sound system in there, thousand watt sound system. Not that I ever wow. use it, but. <laughs> and I um, noticed uh, there's no crank for the windows. All electric. <clears throat> everything they go up and wow. down. Matter of fact, that rear window is electric. That pops down as well very cool uh, and they did a lot of nice things it's actually got air conditioning in it he added air conditioning and um, and you have a sunroof yeah yeah mm -hmm. exactly on it so this must drive like a new car almost i mean yeah it's it, you know it's funny when you sit in this car you realize how short this windshield is yeah i'm not a big guy but you know you got to kind of keep your Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah you kind of kind of look down because the yeah. windshield ends about here, but you still have this headroom up there. Yeah. Actually, it's interesting if you the movie American Graffiti. Oh, you remember, remember that yellow yeah. deuce coupe? Mm -hmm. And uh, when he's in it, he's he's kind of looking down. It looks like why is he doing that? Because you can't really see, see uh, out of that. It's it's kind of an interesting scenario. On it. Now this is a manual transmission yeah. too, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, uh, what's in the back there? Is that a trunk or a rumble seat? This was a rumble seat. seat. Okay. And what they did is they put the tank, the gas tank in there. The gas tank on, the, on these cars was right back here. Okay. Talk about a death trap. Yeah. So they removed that and put it in there. Which, to be honest with you, I would have loved to have had the, the rumble seat so you could take mm -hmm. your grandkids out there or whatever. And then you could see underneath here, I mean, this is spectacular, the, the, oh, the bottom. Gosh. That Jaguar um, rear end. Yeah, yeah you can see beautiful. the internal disc brakes that are on there. I mean, everything's been chromed out and subtly well done, you know, by by some really good craftsmen in the uh, in the California area. Okay, so love the Deuce Coupe. Yeah. Just an absolutely <laughs> stunning car and uh, full documentation on that. So that's a very special car. We have something else here that's very unique and special. And this might also be a one of a one, like the Deuce Coupe. There's mm -hmm. no other one like this one. <laughs> what? Tell us more about this car that you're making model. Sure. It's a 1987 Spice is the chassis. Okay. Uh, two brothers in England, <clears throat> the Spice brothers, uh, wanted to get into IMSA racing, uh, and they 
had, uh, they built the chassis over there, and different engines were put into them. Mm -hmm. this, is, uh, this is one of three that were built for GM in 1987, and they got either a Pontiac or a uh, Buick engine in it, usually okay. a V6 at the time or whatever. This raced in IMSA um, in 1987 and 1988, had a lot of top 10 finishes. They so this is a Ferrari engine? Yeah, it? but this is heavily tweaked. This is 495 horsepower. Okay. Um, and this, we we raced this engine at 92, uh, 9200 RPM. So it, wow. it screams, it screams. It's now a, you're keeping it at a very high rev while you're racing it too, right? On this, yeah, you have to, yeah, mm -hmm. on it. So where are you typically keeping the revs on a car like this when you're racing it? Well, you want to you want to wind it out as much as, as possible. You get an okay. advantage on it. So you know we're in the ninth out, but it's an incredibly sounding car. This was engine we just rebuilt, um, and we've been uh, playing with it for the last uh, two years now. It's a fun car to drive. I'm still in the learning stages of it mm -hmm. and getting better and better and more comfortable with it. But it's uh, it's a that's a really spectacular car. Now this particular, it's a race car obviously, so you're wearing the full suit in there, oh, yeah. and the helmet, mm -hmm. and there's no air conditioning in this car, correct? <laughs> no, <laughs> when we got this car, um, it came with a spare engine. It's a, a 328 Ferrari engine, as is this one. I think I mentioned 355. It's actually a 328 engine, one year uh, below. And, um, these engines are tweaked. You know, the normal is about 380 horsepower. We got these up to almost 500 horsepower. Wow. So a lot went into that. Actually, a Don who works on the car, maybe Don, you want to explain a little bit about this engine and how it's been tweaked, yeah. and we get that kind of horsepower out of it. All right. The basic lower portion of the engine is all Ferrari. All it's all good stuff. The biggest change. Uh, the camshafts, which have been specially ground, and they're almost to Formula One uh, specifications. So with the lift that you get on the valves. The induction system, it's fuel injected. It's electronic fuel injected. But the, these are Cosworth style injectors on it. They do not have a butterfly that rotates. The butterfly that rotates is always in the airstream of the intake system. This has a flat slide that moves back and forth. It's like a guillotine. And when the throttle is wide open, there is nothing in the way between the intake here and the intake valves down below. It's a nice, beautiful flow down into the engine. And it really helps the performance a lot. You know, when you get up to, to very high RPM, and they had raced this, and actually about 10,000 RPM was the maximum they used, but not for a long period of time, because it's, it, it's a lot. Yeah. Uh, Paul is elected to go with 9,200 RPM. The engine is, is phenomenal in the way it sounds and the way it works. The induction system is fantastic. The exhaust headers, every one of them is an equal tune length. So you're hearing eight individual cylinders firing. If the order is, you know, if the headers are not all equal tube lengths, then you get the, the tube lengths interfering with each other. But on this system, you can hear eight cylinders firing. And at 9,200 RPM, it's, it's, it's sweet. <laughs> and, and the reason you detuned it, so to speak, to 9,200 is reliability. We just put the uh, uh, the tachometer, so we won't go beyond that. Yes. Oh, okay. we want to get a little more. You know, we don't want to blow the engine. 800 RPM, no big deal. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Excellent.
Obviously, I'll just say it's a 308 GTS, right, Paul? <laughs> That's <Yeah. good. laughs> And we know it's a 78, right? <laughs> ah, perfect. Okay, I should have seen that. Yeah. So this, tell us about this one. Yeah, this was this was my first Ferrari. I've had this 30 years. Oh, And nice. you caught us now because we took the, the rear bonnet off mm -hmm. and we're doing some uh, maintenance work okay. on it on it as we speak. Um, great car. When people think of a Ferrari, a lot of times this is the one that they, they see the most on. On mm -hmm. TV, white. It's been on a number of shows and stuff like that. Great fun car. The top comes off. That's why it's called the GTS. Okay. So you get the best of both worlds, and the top fits in the back. Um, is this the Tom Selleck car? Then? Yeah, this is the Tom Selleck car. Yeah. Okay. This is what they usually think of. Yeah. Um, you know, when they think of a Ferrari, you know, five speed, um, eight cylinder engine, three liter. Mm, I think it's 280 horse. Not, not going to knock your socks off, yeah. but a fun car. I've had it 30 years, been very reliable, and um, a, a great car to drive, you know, in mm -hmm. the summer when you got the sun out. It's a great car. Like all great collections, there's uh, a final car in the collection, and we always like to save the best for last. And here we have something that's very special. Uh, this is not a replica car. No, it's not. <laughs> Paul can attest to that, so tell us more about this beautiful thing. Yeah, you know, I mentioned before that I was uh, kind of a Ford guy yeah. in my early years or whatever, and uh, back then, this was the car, this was the supercar, you know, Howard Shelby took a AC body and put a, a Ford engine into it, and the rest has been history, you know, there's been a lot written about Carol Shelby and the Cobras or whatever. And and uh, what kind of uh, material is this? Is this aluminum then? This yeah. body? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is an all aluminum. Mm -hmm. This is not fiberglass. Nope. 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 All, all aluminum. This originally, um, this is 329th uh, uh, 289 engine Cobra. It came out. Okay. And it went to Jack Beasley Ford that was in Altoona, Pennsylvania. And it was a uh, uh, private sponsored uh, drag car. Okay. Yeah. And so it, it probably looked a little different than this. Yes, it actually was red. We have pictures up on the side because I got a lot of a lot of stuff. And it ran and it was very successful. It did 11.52 and a quarter mile at 126 miles an hour. Wow. Back then, that was well, to, even today. That's that's a that's a fast car or whatever. And. Um, I got this is a California car. I was in California, and I always wanted one. And 30 years ago, I found this one. Flew out there, took a look at it, and fell in love. And it's been a great car. Now, when you yeah. bought it, was it in this condition? Yes. Okay. I always try and buy after it's been restored. <laughs> let someone else and do yeah, all the work. Let somebody yeah. else. I've done enough restorations that they well, you, you never get back your total load. Well, well, you told us about the dues. That was a three hundred twenty-five thousand dollar. Yeah. Yes, restoration yeah, yes and i'm sure you didn't pay three hundred twenty-five thousand no, 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 for that I so i get your philosophy it <laughs> makes total sense and, and the other know. thing about this car was you know I, it was it was big money back then yeah. but these cars have skyrocketed over oh, yeah. the years um I, I never bought it as an investment i bought it because i wanted it actually every car in here was always bought with the idea that i would use it i liked it for whatever mm -hmm. reason and i've been pretty fortunate that they've all gone up yeah. significantly in value. Yeah, that says a lot about the uh, cars that you're choosing. Right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is probably appreciating the most of any car in your collection, would you say? Yes. Although that BBLM race car that I had skyrocketed as well. It okay. got so valuable. It was too valuable at time, time to, to get now, rid Now, the of typical it. Cobra that we see doesn't have this. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So why is that? Why? Is it just a design preference? I, I don't know whether that was, you know, um, the the way that they uh, built them with the newer ones would just try to make it look smoother without it, mm -hmm. but um, the original ones all have, they okay. certainly, they came to the United States. I like uh, this. Yeah. I think it looks really yeah. sharp. And, yeah. and a lot of the replicas, they don't even have this grill in there. It's just all open. Yes, uh, some truth is, some of them do that, but, but the, mm -hmm. They're real good replicas. You have to take a minute or two to go around them to figure out. And they're much more friendly. This has leaf springs in the front. Oh, uh, yeah. Definitely. I mean, so it's 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 pretty cool. It's a fun car to drive. Get a little quirky. Mm -hmm. A lot of power in this thing. Uh, this is 320 horsepower. This one's been 
tweak it's got. Let's see what that yeah. looks like. Would you say of all the cars, this is the most visceral or the most uh, adrenaline pumping to drive of yes. all of them? Okay. Well, maybe the race car. Oh, yeah. Okay. But well. this one here, um, because it's got the side pipes and you're open, mm -hmm. you're going 20 miles an hour. It sounds like you're going 100. And it's it's got a tremendous amount of power. Again, power to weight ratio on this thing is phenomenal. Oh, bad. You know. With, with yeah, all what do you think this power. car weighs? Uh, this car is about uh, 1,700 pounds. Wow. Yeah. And it's an all aluminum body, yeah. which is in gorgeous shape. Someone really put a lot of love and time into painting this car. Yeah, yeah. And this is, it was, the a restoration of this has to be, I've had it 30 years, got to be 40 years ago. Okay. I try and keep it, you know, as pristine Yeah, you have the leather possible. interior. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, this interior looks How beautiful. How about these uh, seat yeah. belts? Circa 1964. Yeah, those are great. I don't want to replace them because I like. Yeah, know, I like the originality. It's got that of vintage it. look. Yeah, and you actually have a trunk in this car yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. There's so. a trunk back here. Mm -hmm. On it, and you know, gas tank you fill there, which is a mm -hmm. little inconvenient. I made myself a little piece that fits there. So oh, when you do gas, it doesn't yeah. flow over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So premium fuel, I'm sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And manual transmission. Yeah, regular four four speed. And you know, when I look at the pedals here, it looks like it's a it's pretty ergonomic, really. You know, some of the cars they have a wheel well that comes in, and it's hard to get your feet on the pedals. Yeah. But mm -hmm. it looks good. Yeah, it looks like it's. Uh, yeah, and it still has, uh, I think it's four fifty six gears in the rear end from from uh, wow. the drag days. So, you know, zero zero to to 60 miles an hour, this car is just a knockout. It's just unbelievable. You gotta be careful. You go around a turn, you don't hit the gas too much because you'll lose the rear rev. Is that quick. right? Yeah. How many gears are in this then? Four. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right, I love those wheels. Mm -hmm. Those are the Yeah, original. those are true magnesium wheels and I have one other set also. I was able to get another set because God forbid you, you crack them, yeah. you're not gonna be able to fix them. You can't weld magnesium, so. Now, some of, sometimes you'll see uh, they have the wires on these to keep them This from does turning. have the wires. It's down here. It's right behind my oh, finger. okay. P put your finger here. Oh, yeah. yeah? Yeah. Oh, very cool. Yeah, okay. just so it doesn't unravel for you. Mm -hmm.